the way it works, Alex, is we print paper, whether it's dollar bills or treasuries, and then other governments around the world or central banks around the world buy that paper and the paper goes down in value. So it's a taxation system through the balance sheet. No legislature, you know, every country in the world hasn't passed a law saying, okay, we're going to pay a 5% tithe to the United States empire every year. But in fact, that's what's happening through the currency system. And now by the devaluation, the tax is increasing. Right. The tax is increasing, and what we're watching just in the last two weeks with various people around the world squawking is they're squawking because the, the subsidy that needs to be extracted every year is greater and greater, and the pain of the taxation as the economy slows down is greater and greater. Unbelievable. Continue breaking down this global government architecture. When you were talking about this 10 years ago, the media would still poo-poo it. Now they're admitting world government is here. But simultaneously, if you then say, oh, I don't want to be part of it, they say, this person's insane. It doesn't exist. I want to get your take on that. Amazing. Catherine Austin Fitz. If you believe Obama... Catherine Austin Fitz is our guest. Solari.com. Incredible videos, articles, information, investing advice. We'll get some of that from her coming up before she leaves us. Solari, S-O-L-A-R-I.com. Links up at Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. Of course, we're simulcasting at PrisonPlanet.tv right now. This is a short segment, long segment coming up. Catherine, I'm going to try to just sit back and let you roll now uh, because I want to hear what you think is most important and where all this is going and how we protect ourselves. But uh, just to realize that open world government's being established, a financial predatory dictatorship that wants us poor and easily controlled, openly being stated, a, a, a fake green tyranny, all of this is being set up, and we're not even having a national debate about it. They're just announcing with one hand, world government is here and it's good, and and then... With the other hand, saying, if you talk about it, you're a dangerous kook, it doesn't exist. Can you talk about that? Well, I, you know, I don't, I don't know anybody who says you're a kook if you talk about that. I mean, I, I never get called a kook. No, no, I know you don't get called a kook by the public because right. Ban Ki Moon's and the New York Times calling for global governance. Well, but, but the, the only, I mean, well, I mean, here's an example since you said it. I had CBS News, Jerusalem uh -huh. Post, ADL, Salon. All, yesterday, all attack me and say I'm insane, none of it exists. Well, the, the, you know, he, planet Earth divides up into what I call the pro-centralization team and, and the pro-decentralization team. And if you look at how the money works, Alex, the economy has been steadily centralizing more and more money, and so more and more people are on the dole. They're on the payroll of the pro-centralization team. So, you know, when somebody who's making money on something attacks me for for you know, in, in whatever way. I mean, I, in Washington, we used to just call them the attack poodles. <laughs> <laughs> so when the attack poodles, you tell you you're crazy, that's what they're paid to do. You know, it's a game. It's not real. So And they know they're lying. Yeah, they know. that. One of the things that's so amazing to me is you see more and more of people just, you know, they can't keep a straight face even they're, when they're saying it. I was watching the clip this morning of the attorney general announcing the financial fraud task force. I mean, talk about projection. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, and he literally, it, it looked to me like he couldn't keep a straight face. So, you know, these guys know it, but, it, you know, it, you know it's a game. And the rest of us are on the pro-decentralization team, and part of the challenge is we, do, we have not yet created a vision of where the alternative is. And let me, let me talk about one of the places that we're stuck, because this is so, so important. If, have I ever, you, you probably don't know my, my very famous red button story. I was, uh, I was giving a speech to a group of people called Spiritual Frontiers Foundation International, and they have a conference once a year, Alex, where they go and sit in the woods for a couple of days and talk about how they can help our society evolve spiritually. So a friend of mine had asked me to give them a speech called How the Money Works in Organized Crime, and it later became a very famous article called Narco Dollars for Beginners, and it's Designed to yes, explain, I've read it. Right. It's designed to explain the intersection of narcotics trafficking, organized crime, and government and big corporations. Anyway, so sort of Wall Street in Washington does drug money. So, so I'm in the middle of the speech, and I'm explaining the fact um, we're talking about the, the Dark Alliance uh, allegations and the two hearings that Congress had on CIA drug dealing in South Central L.A., and I mentioned at the time 
uh, a reporter that I was helping was told by the Department of Justice that the U.S. economy launders five hundred billion to a trillion dollars a year of uh, five hundred billion to a trillion of all dirty money. So that's narcotics trafficking, um, you know, illegal gambling, tax evasion, everything. So, so I said to this wonderful group of a hundred uh, spiritually evolved, committed people. What would happen if we stopped being the global leader in money laundering? And they said, well, you know, the money would go to other stock exchanges, so the New York Stock Exchange would go down and our mutual funds would go down, and we'd have trouble rolling over the government deficit, so we'd have, you know, our our taxes might go up and our government checks might stop. And I said, okay, let's pretend there's a big red button up here on the lectern. And if you push that button, you can stop all hard narcotics trafficking in your county, your state, your country tomorrow, thus offending the people who control $500 billion to a trillion dollars a year. Who here will push the button? And this was the summer of 2000. Out of 100 people dedicated to evolving our society spiritually, guess how many would push the button? How many? One. One would push the button. The other 99 would not. I said, why would you not push the button? They said, we don't want our government checks to stop, and we don't want our mutual funds to go down. And that's the trap. That's how that's evil gets you dependent on them. And the police all know the government brings in most of the drugs, but they just, they have to keep buying the delusion of busting kids and putting them in prison. If you decriminalize the drugs, the money would dry up, the crime would leave it, and the ODing would stop, and the drug abuse would plunge. All the studies prove it. Stay with us. Solari.com the website. Her name is Catherine Austin Fitz. She was uh, one of the top people at HUD. Managing Director and Member of the Board of Wall Street Firm Dylan Reed & Co. She's designed and closed over $25 billion of transactions and investments to date and has led portfolio strategy for $300 billion of financial assets and liabilities. And we're just really honored to have her with us. Um, okay, Catherine, we ran into that break and you were breaking down the centralization team versus the decentralization team or team tyranny versus team liberty. Uh, there's so many facets in this. How far along is this new form of world government? Describe some of that world government to us, and then get into whatever subjects you want to cover. Solutions. How you think people can individually protect themselves. Strategies for states and counties. Okay, well, let me, let me jump back for a second. To the, yeah, the red to the button. History of the, what, I, uh, what I call the black budget. Because you really need to understand the history of this. People don't understand how it could have gotten so bad and me not notice. Um, what happened, Alex, was in 1947 and 1949, we passed the National Security Act and the CIA Act, and those two acts in combination allowed money to be clawed out of the federal government and federal budget and spent in non-transparent ways. So we, we created a secret way of funding very big projects through, through the governmental mechanism. Now, remember, they can borrow as much money as they want. And then something else happened, because if you, if you go back and you look at the history of financial fraud and the kind of corruption we're looking at, and you, you interview or you research and you read the people sort of dealing with it, it all comes back to a point after World War II where literally the government lost control of the technology. We had the most powerful, secretive, black technology in the world, including some that we brought over from the Nazis, and literally, we've created this funding mechanism that paid corporations to control and manage technology. And, and a lot of what we're dealing with goes back to the fact that we've had since then 50 to 60 years of incredible non-transparent governmental flows going into basically corporate-controlled technology that many of us don't understand. Um, and, and when you say, well, how can, how can the military force countries all around the world to take paper that keeps going down in value, it all comes back, as, as you probably know, to the, a lot of the invisible weaponry, the satellite systems, and all this incredible technology that, that we don't understand and know about. Does that make well, any sense? Uh, I mean, they brag that they're really 30 years advanced and they've got satellites where they can radiate somebody from space. Uh, I mean, we have a highly advanced technocracy that has walled itself off in military reservations, private corporate reservations, as you know, is uh, he right. heading up a big company that uh, uh, developed a lot of uh, financial software systems. 
And they've rolled out the Internet systems, the banking systems, the cashless systems that have now just been adopted. It's like poisoning the well, uh, poisoning the water hole, and the deer come to it and drink and then go off and die and don't even know what killed them. Right. It's just like all the technology to track and control us is built into the iPhone or the cell phone. We just accept it, and we're now basically like savages in this 21st century Buck Rogers system, not even knowing what we're part of in the elite as Bill Joy wrote in the uh, April issue in 2000 in Wired Magazine, the elite don't need us anymore. Why right. the they future doesn't need us? Well, 